has been very tough to own. I mean, really, these retail properties in this country, I mean, we simply have too many stores at a moment when so many consumers no longer want to shop in person. As I've told you many times before, if companies want to make it through this difficult period, they need to give the millennial cohort something experiential, meaning something these kids can post on Instagram or Snap, whatever, which brings me to EPR Properties, a real estate investment trust that owns all kinds of entertainment, recreation, education-related assets, from megaplex movie theaters to retail centers, Centers, uh, golf complexes, ski parks, casinos, charter schools. They are merchants of experiences with a charter school kicker that really can't hurt given that our new education secretary loves charter schools so much. But it's the other side of the equation that interests me, particularly since EPR just bought a bunch of ski properties and water parks from a fund named CNL Lifestyle Properties early last month. Yet since then, its stock has fallen more than 5%. While the company reported a solid quarter two weeks ago, it wasn't able to halt the stock's decline. Is this the buying opportunity we've been waiting for? Because this has been a big winner for us. Let's check in with Greg Silvers. He's the president and CEO of EPR Properties. Learn more about how his company's doing, where it's headed. Mr. Silvers, welcome back to Mad Money. Good to see you, sir. Good to see you. Good to see you, the man who first introduced the concept of experiential to us and how right you've been. I'm thinking this is a great opportunity, but I want you to walk people through a really important transaction you did, CNO, which gave stock, which maybe people who got the stock didn't care and have sold it down, which could be the opportunity for a monthly dividend, that's really important, a monthly dividend for people who are watching. Yeah, for us, it was a, a $700 million transaction that we funded with over 90% equity. So we took advantage to delever the company. But part of that, these went to uh, retail shareholders right. who've, who've really been locked up from liquidity for 10 or 12 years. So we thought there could be some volatility. We've not seen large numbers of, of, of volatility. We have seen some trading, right. but really strong support in and around the low 70 number where we've seen a lot of buying as well. So we think it's a real good opportunity. And what did you get from CNL? What are the, because it sounds like some pretty exciting yeah, properties. Yeah, we, we got ski properties, we got water parks. Again, sort of our uh, not resort destination, okay. but daily metropolitan in and around major metropolitan areas that are serviced by top quality brands. Again, water parks that use water as, a, as a, an experience right. and uh, ability to take advantage of admissions and concessions businesses that we know a lot about. Okay, I, these are events where obviously people just take thousands of, of, of selfies and pictures. Yes, right? absolutely. That's what you think about. Exactly. Now, I want to talk about Top Golf. We haven't spent a lot of time on it. Mm -hmm. This is somehow this thing's booming. I yes. mean, I didn't, you told me it would boom. Mm -hmm. I didn't see it coming. I saw Callaway up a lot. What the heck is going on with golf? Well, again, this is more than just golf. It okay. truly is about the experience. You take, a, you take an activity that's difficult for many people. I mean, the, the time commitment, mm -hmm. the, the expense, the frustration, candidly. Right. But you wrap it up in an entertainment setting with an incredible food and beverage opportunity. And it's fun. It's about people wanting to share communal experiences, to have fun with friends, family, colleagues. And it's been incredibly successful. Everyone we open sets new records. It's just a, a great concept that we're proud to be a part of. Now, I also want to talk about, there's some short-sightedness about the analysts. They'll say, well, listen, short runs of theaters and whatever. This Megaplex business is fabulous, right? Talk about the how many, what the numbers uh, go up after you've been involved in refurbish. Generally, as we said, we've got uh, a, a good set now that we've had open for a year or more. And for those stores, it's been a top-line revenue increase of over 40%. For a while revenue, going up over 40%. Well, it, doesn't that mean if you're one of these gigantic real estate investment trusts that are, are hurting in shopping malls, they should be trying to figure a way to partner with you? Yeah, and we do. We, we, do? Actually, okay. we actually do work with, uh, with some of the mall guys. And I think part of the answer is going to be everybody's looking for experiential. But entertainment doesn't solve bad demographics. If we've got, if, 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 we, if we have a, a, pad, a bad property, entertainment's not gonna fix that. Entertainment makes good properties better. Okay, what's gonna happen to some of these guys? I mean, you know, there is true. Everyone was looking pretty good, but as they get, as stores get shut, mm -hmm. I mean, look, it, it, it's, you're, you're, you can come in, you're, you have no uh, dog in the right. hunt. As stores get shut, get shut, it's not that much fun to go. No, no, and truly what we've forgotten is that the malls used to be part of the experiential yes. economy. You went there and you hung out, you, you met friends. Now with shopping on, on so much internet driven, it's very difficult. Right. We're not a, a foreteller of retails going away. Right. It really needs to be right sized. 
We're, right. We are over-retailed probably as a country, and we need to, to get down to a right size. But somehow we're under-megaplexed. No, absolutely. Why is that? Because often we were not the highest and best use. The, there were retailers who could pay right. big numbers. Right, and before so, this happened, before absolutely. Amazon, you were not the highest and best use. Right, so now it's creating opportunities where there are good properties, good demographics. We see opportunity there. And then I see a big movie slate, and I think now EPR, monthly dividend, good mm -hmm. return, and that's got to be right. 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 It's, it's going to be great. What we see, what, what the properties we own, people understand. They experience them every day. And we're, we're, we're really glad to be part of this experiential economy. One last thing. Trump trade, I mean, the charter, you got the person who in this country who may want charter schools more than anybody else <laughs> that I could tell as a part of education. It's got to help. It does. It's no, it, there's no doubt that school choice and school options uh, being led by someone who, who has a, a big voice in that community is very positive, uh, at least for school choice, and we're proud that, that she's out there carrying that, that, that voice. And, and, and what can she do? I mean, what, what happens? What can the federal government do? Well, the federal government really doesn't drive they, schools, they but it, what it does is it sets the narrative. When people are beginning to talk about these issues, when people are beginning to understand that we have someone who's supportive of choice, right. then again, it, it controls, it lets it at a local and a state level where most of these decisions are actually made. Well, I just think yours is the right time to own this stock. I don't see yields going back up to four, but, and you, I love, remember, a month, so many of you say, how do I get paid monthly? How about 5.8% monthly? Greg Silver's president and CEO of EPR Properties. Everything is hitting on all cylinders. They have money's back after the break. Booyah! Jim Cramer here from Mad Money. Thanks for watching CNBC on YouTube. Click here to subscribe and get the jump on my exclusives with CEOs, plus market news, investing advice, and a whole lot more.